piece of five meters in. Now, it's time to replace the crappy Chinese controller with their afterburner from Australia. All right, in this video, I am gonna talk about the afterburner controller to control the Chinese diesel heaters. The problem with the factory Chinese diesel heater is temperature control. There's ways to control them a little bit better using the factory remotes. There's a bunch of different types of remotes to control these diesel heaters. But one issue is they don't cut the heat off at the appropriate temperature or get them to burn low enough to where it doesn't roast you out at night, even when you have these set on the lowest settings. So there's a gentleman in Australia that makes these. They are, it's an aftermarket diesel heater controller with an external temperature sensor. Um, he's got, I think, three different options. This is the most basic. All I wanted was be able to control it temperature-wise like a thermostat. So I've used the Eberspacher and I love their temperature control because you could set it on a low enough setting that it won't roast you out. Now this is what this will do. So quick walkthrough, sends over instructions. He has a very detailed list on which ones of these are compatible with this. And sometimes you could tell by the remote, but I actually tore my heater apart to actually look at it, to look at the actual ECU, and I recommend you doing the same. First thing he has you do is open it up and connect the wire loom, which you can see there's two connections on there. And what that's going to do is that's going to tie in this controller into this afterburner. And then the afterburner is going to learn the parameters of the heater and then allow you to control it via the afterburner. Um, and then you'll be able to fine tune what you want. Um, I don't know if this model has it, but some of the models have uh, Bluetooth capability with an app that you can control it all from your phone. I don't really need that. Uh, this is going to go into our four-wheel camper. So we've got the diesel heater installed down there. Took out all the propane. That looks factory. And then the controller is going to be right there, which is right by the bed. So I don't really need Bluetooth capability on it. So now I'll go through the next steps and get this thing connected to the heater controller. All right, step one, remove all power to the diesel heater. Which that okay. All right, so I've gone ahead and unplugged the factory controller, plugged it into the loom. There's only one connection, it's a female connection, and then this male connects into it, and then this connection here. Um, one thing to note is they have a couple different style of these connections. I think he has a screw on round ones, and then these are the triangle three wire connections. So now we restore power. It's starting up. All right, so menu, we're going to be doing the left button twice. One, two, and then it says the up button three times. One, two, three, but to the heater tuning, so that's four. And then finally press the right button. So we're gonna push the up button and that will start the inheritance process. Adopt LCD controller settings. Press the right to inherit and save. Password is 1688. Okay. Centered confirm. Storing. Is that it? Okay, well, now it says that it'll work without the other controller attached, so let's try it. All right. I have turned off the power and then turned it back on. Let's see. Stopped. Ready. 
Let's see if I can do user settings. Edit. settings in this. Another cool feature is this thing tracks the hours that it's actually running. I really like that. There's lots of tuning in this. So that shows my target temperature, I think. Fan RPM, little glow plug symbol. Oh, that's cool. Shows you the flow rate. Can hear the pump so i've also upgraded the pump on this to an actual eberspacher diesel pump the factory one from the chinese heater is obnoxiously loud i did test the heater with the factory controller just prior to this and just made sure everything was working proper So while the thing starts igniting, you can see the menu structure on this. There is tons of options and settings you can do on here. That's too cool. All right, so you can see the flow has gone up a lot from the initial. It's not showing ignited. Oh, that's awesome. It shows you how much we've used That must be the temperature inside, because now it's rapidly climbing. All right, got ourselves a nice diesel fire heater. That's too cool. So I'm gonna go through and pull the user manual, just go through the whole thing. I've looked at it before, but temperature, fuel consumed, your flow rate, the RPMs of your fan, your target temperature. Man, that's too cool. What the temperature is in here. This is gonna be sweet. Well, I hope this video helped. It's quick, simple, but I wanted to see something like this on this heater controller. Um, I'll throw up a better view after we get to use this a couple times in our pop-up camper. Thanks for watching. Alright, so for all of us in North America, with these silly Fahrenheit. I pushed the left button twice. I looked up his manual for this. It's 119 pages. This guy just does this out of his shop at his house. This isn't some big company. Um, so then, left button twice, I get the menu. You can see the Celsius there. It's 
go edit and the parameters will be now Fahrenheit. Let's check that. Aha! Man, this gets better and better. That's too cool. So if you want to run a diesel heater, this is the way to go. I firmly believe in the Eberspacher and the Wobostos. Um, we have only put the Eberspachers in our vans that we build, but I had a Chinese diesel heater laying around the shop and I wanted to try this. I think this is a great idea. It's very inexpensive. I think it was like 85 bucks. It only took four days to get from Australia to North America. And now I've got all the control, all the information that I need on this heater. So hopefully this works out pretty good. I'm excited.